Okay, our next chapter is chapter 5, and this involves measurements and calculations. Okay, so from the scientific method, you've heard of observations. Okay, this is what you look at um, in life. And observations can be qualitative, um, which means they're descriptive, such as color, smell, or shape. They can also be quantitative, which means it involves numbers, such as 10 G, which means 10 grams for a mass. And these two should be familiar from chapter one. Um, a little while ago, I did teach you qualitative and quantitative. Um, the important part about this chapter is that when you take a measurement, um, a measurement here is defined as a quantitative observation. What I'm looking for is that your measurement has a number and a unit. So there's a sign up in my class that says no naked numbers, and now you're really going to understand what that means. So a unit is the symbol that gives your measurement meaning, such as gram, the dollar sign for money, pounds when you step on a scale, or liter. Okay, now units, um, these are parts of the measurements that tell us what scale is being used. Um, in our country, the U.S., for some reason we have chosen the English system. Um, most of the industrialized world uses the metric system, um, which was created in 1960. Um, it's SI, or the international system. Apparently, the U.S. is slowly changing to the metric system. Um, like our soda is measured in liter bottles, but still, like a can of soda, we would call it ounces. Um, but there is a milliliter reading on there, but for the most part, we're still with the English system. So if you watch the weather, um, the temperature is in Fahrenheit. But if you were to travel to Europe, it'd be in Celsius. If you drive here in our country, it's miles per hour. But outside this country, it's kilometer per hour. So different systems, but in science, we will follow the metric system, which is why you have to learn this. Okay, and I just thought this would be interesting to let you know, and um, this is really just for your information. Uh, when I started teaching here, this was big news. Um, I started in 1998, and this took place in 1999. NASA, right? Uh, it's a big organization for science. Um, they created a $125 million Mars Climate Orbiter. And that means it was going to be sent to Mars to check out the climate, right? That's what you do to check out other planets. Um, but it was lost, and here's why. Um, this is meant to show you the importance of units and knowing how to convert your units. Um, there was a failure to convert from English to metric. There were two labs working on this project. You had the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, and they assumed the data from the orbiter rocket was in metric units. The orbiter was built in Lockheed Martin Astronomics in Denver, Colorado, and they really used English units. So that's where my question is. I'm not sure why they used English when science usually follows metrics. So the two labs, um, I don't know if they didn't talk to each other or just assumed one was working in one unit, whatever. One was English, one was metric. The orbiter went out into space, dipped down 100 kilometers into the Mars atmosphere, and it was burned up. So because there was a failure to convert, I know that the units were in the same system, um, that $125 million orbiter was lost. Huge news when I started teaching because it was unbelievable that the units were not the same. Anyway, uh, the first piece of measurement you need to understand is what's called scientific notation. And this deals with very large or very small numbers, and it makes them easier to write. So for example, on the screen you see 93 a uh, million miles from the Earth to the Sun, that's the distance. But instead of writing all those zeros, check out this notation here. 9.3 times 10 to the seventh miles, that is called scientific notation. So to start with the 9.3, your first number should be between 1 and about 9.9, .9, somewhere in there. So that's why this starts as 93 million, but the first notation is 9.3. And then the times 10 is showing you how many places you'd need to move it to reach the end of the number. So if you start in between the 9 and the 3 and move it, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places till you reach the end. And it's a positive 7 because this is a large number. Now let's check out some other examples. Alright, check out this one. Um, a number between 1 and about 9 would be 8.9. 779 rather than this huge number and then it's times 10 and then see if I'm right is it eight places start between the eight and the seven and move it one two three four five six seven eight so it's to the end of the number 
Here, um, there's no zeros, so what? It starts the same way. It's 3.74, and if you put the point in and move it two places, times 10 to the second, 1, 2, I have the correct number. Now, in the next example, you see a negative number because this is a small number, and we need to account for that. So still the decimal goes between 4 and 5, but why is it negative 6? Okay, put your... Um, place between the 4 and the 5 and move it until you reach the end of the number towards the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you reach that decimal, and that's how we get times 10 to the negative 6. In our next example, if it's 9.22, you move it 1, 2 places to the left, so it's negative 2. Here, how do we take numbers out of scientific notation? Okay, you just have to watch your exponent. So you see the number one. If there's no decimal place, you assume there's one on the right side of it. So this says times 10 to the negative two. So you move it back one, two places and make sure you fill in that zero. In our next example, it's a positive number. So you start at the decimal and move it that many places till you reach the end. One, two, 7.9. Why does it stay as 7.9? Because 10 to the 0 is 1. It is not 0. So anytime you see times 10 to the 0, the number will not change. And then finally here, if it says 10 to the 1, you really just move it one place. So don't think too much. 3.3 moved over because it's positive 1 to the right makes it 33.4.